Hi, I'm Brian, and I've got a monster under the back seat of my car and in my trunk. I know it's there because I can hear the chains jingling in the back, and I can hear all kinds of thumping and clunking, noises coming from back there, and I also get this horrible kind of nasty smell. It's more just kind of like this funk. Oh, I'm going to show you how to get rid of it and what's causing all that monster evidence. Brian's Mobile One. Gloves. Check. <laughs> now that I have the new exhaust on the Subaru, I'm really sensitive to any kind of rattles. Uh, one reason is that the exhaust about came off from the turbo. The other reason is all the banging and shaping of the bodywork that I had to do to make sure that this thing will not rattle. That's a squeak. Squeaks you can't avoid when you have rubber exhaust hangers. Uh, but anyway, I'm going through this vehicle and getting rid of all the rattles, pulling everything out. And one of the things that people often overlook is the crap that's underneath the back seat or in the trunk area. All of these, you know, the washer, uh, this battery, which could incidentally cause problems with the seat belts. Look at all the crud on the seat belt that could rot that out and make it weak. Um, but the coins alone are a big deal. Hey, Lego hair. What is that, kiss? <laughs> Anyway, there's so many things in here. There's airsoft babies, you name it. There's just so much junk that can vibrate and rattle. Fortunately, a lot of soda pop's been spilled back here and glued a lot of it down to where it doesn't rattle, but the rest of it I need to go through and get out. It also gives you a brief history of your car and who owned it. Somebody that was really concerned about their breath, uh, did PDR repair. There's all kinds of little remnants from PDR tools and then I found a card that just really gives it away. You can find out what state. New Mexico, huh? New Albuquerque. So anyway, I'm gonna just go through and clean all of this stuff out. Another thing to address is there's a whole bunch of cabling from an old sound system that was in this. You want to make sure that all your ends are taped. The ground wire for the amplifier uh, took away this cargo mount hold and I use these. You know, I tie stuff down. This is a wagon. I'm gonna use it so I knew I had one here, but I didn't know where that one was. So by pulling that out, I got some access. You see all these little nuts and bolts? And then you see all these little uh, hole caps. These hole caps are for PDR. If you drill a hole, you can cap it back off. And just kind of cover your tracks. Sometimes you gotta take the inside of the car apart uh, to get to dents. The funny thing is, this PDR tech that had this car, I don't know if that'll show up on camera or not, but it's really wavy. This is actually a hail damage car. And so he probably picked this up cheap, it wasn't worth fixing, and then thought, hey, hatchback wagon with the turbo, sweet, mine, he picked it up cheap, or did it for trade, who knows. But uh, this car's got all kinds of damage on it. You know, and I, I keep calling this my beater or my ski car or whatever, I mean, this thing's pretty beat and beaten on. This car just has all kinds of dents all over it, which is perfect for parking in a parking lot where people are fumbling with skis for the first time. People may be asking, how do you get into this? So the seat's held in in three places. It's held in right here. Uh, there's a little corresponding hook thing that goes around there. And then also in the front, you can see the lines from the bars and a bolt hole. There's one here, you can see the threads to it. And there's another one over there, so one, two, and three. Super easy. Let me show you the seat side. These are the bolts that hold it in. They just go like that. You have to put the back of the seat in and pull it out last. This is that little retaining hook. So you have to get that to go down and under. In order to accomplish that, you just have the front of the seat sit really high so that that thing can submarine underneath the hook and pull in. And then it's just a matter of putting this bolt in and that bolt in. So the next step I do is I get a screwdriver, get up all the rest of the stuck coins or BBs or whatever, and just try to get things to come loose a little bit. You just scrape around, you'll find all kinds of things come up that you're just like, man, I didn't see that before, or I didn't get that before. So once you've done that, gather up all the big loose stuff and just kind of go to town on it. Once you're past that phase, get out your vacuum of whatever sort or go to the place that has a vacuum. And just cruise through. It's really satisfying. I don't know exactly why, but it's like, man, I don't want to do that. That seems like work. Once you get going, it actually feels really good. So get your vacuum in one hand and then get your cheap screwdriver in the other hand. And just go ahead and pry things up. But just cruise through and clean it up. The biggest thing is it's just, for me, it's cleaner, it's safer because your seat belts aren't going to rot.
It's really satisfying how quickly things get clean. As you're going through and vacuuming around the seat belts, uh, you're getting around your line that goes for your washer fluid. It's just amazing how much transformation takes place. It makes it quieter, safer, cleaner, smell better. There's just so many different reasons to do this. Like I say, it's kind of fun, but this is where we're at right now. Just a couple of seconds ago, we look like this. And before too long, we're going to look like this. Huge transformation. And the improvement in smell alone is worth doing this. So there was just way too much crud underneath. I already popped all the coins off. You can see where the little silhouette is from them. But there's just, just so much stuff under here. So I just pulled off this uh, stabilizer support bracket. And then I also pulled out these. I think I'm going to unclip this and just take them in and wash them in the sink. Because there's all this sugar turns to bacteria and bacteria stinks. And it's disease ridden. So I don't need all this stuff in my car. I don't like the smell from the bacteria. Anytime you get it wet or a humid day, there'd be a funky smell. Never underestimate the power of water to get bacteria, sugar, soda pop, and things like that softened up. Let them soak. Uh, go ahead and do this. Eat your breakfast. Come back to it. And when your old dish brush scrubber gets worn out, don't throw it away. Throw it in your uh, washing stuff. But what you just, you know, you can't vacuum this stuff off, but you can sure pre-soak it. And then once it's good and soaked, I mean, sugar's water soluble. Bacteria doesn't mind a little soap. And uh, just get it this way. Cup holders, ashtrays, coin dishes, uh, center consoles where your drink goes, all of those things. Take them out, put them in your sink. So I've let this soak while I was eating breakfast. Get a little bit of hot water and a little bit of soap. You don't have to scrub very hard anymore. It just comes off with the brush pretty easy. So, a lot of it has dried for years and years and years. It was liquid when it went on. The water came out of it. And then it just it's like glue or tar or something. Put the water back in. It comes off pretty easy. And by the way, to clarify, I'll spray them down like this and then just let that sit. The water's not going to evaporate in two seconds. I just let it sit on it and soak in. Man, don't those look good. Now there's no exact science, there's a lot of ways to do this, but once we get this wet and start to soak it, like we did with those other bars that went across here and here, it's going to start to smell bad. So what I like to do is use some simple green. It gives that pine fresh scent that kind of covers it for the period of time that it's awakened by the water. So by the time this dries, uh, it'll kind of subside too. But you just want to get everything kind of sprayed down. I use a spray bottle. Um, be careful around your electrical connections. It's not going to be that bad being the cleaner. Go through and just get everything wet. This will cause everything to kind of loosen up and let go. You know, as it dries on, it becomes like glue. This takes it back to liquid again. So I'm staying close when I'm spraying so it doesn't get into everything. But I'll go through and spray it. Let it soak for a little bit. I'll do two or three different passes of it. And then that same old dish scrubber that I was using in the house, I'm just going to use it to loosen things up. And then the last step is you just go back through with a damp cloth and just kind of lift what you have. Get a bucket of water, warm water, and then just go back through and just kind of wipe up the residue that you have. You do that, you're just going to be okay. This gets rid of all that odor causing bacteria that smells like a monster in your back seat. Look at all that dog hair in there. See the dog hair? For one, it's satisfying because it gets rid of the smell. You're actually accomplishing something. You get that feeling of accomplishment. But two, it's just visually, it's just awesome. You know what I mean? Dude, that penny came out of nowhere. When you're buying a used car, you can learn a lot about it by just looking under the back seat. All it took was a 12 millimeter socket, zip, zip, and you're in. The minivans are the worst. You get underneath the minivan back seat where you had a child seat. And, you know, it makes perfect sense because kids are screaming in the back seat, I'm hungry, I want to do this. And mom's trying to get her errands done, you know, just a minute. You know, she'll pick up some sweets or candy or something to keep the kids happy and quiet. Just shut up, you're driving me crazy. Stick this in your noise hole. And then uh, before you know it, you've got all kinds of sugary, you know, like tummy yummies that you see in the checkout at Walmart. That sugary, nasty stuff. You know, kids have that, and then they're tired and cranky. That's why they're yelling to begin with. They drop it, it goes in the floor, gets in the carpet everywhere. That's just how things go, you know. 
Oh, I've got this off. Why don't I just clean that too? It's just dirt. Man, it's gonna be so much better than it was. So I found some more goodies down the back side of here, including a Las Vegas purse, neon paint, some kind of sweet pen, whatever. And uh, this is a little disturbing is a mayonnaise packet that's slightly open and stinky. And then this stuff clinking around. And this spare tire uh, bolt or nut or whatever. I couldn't find this to save my life before. I wound up getting a bolt and a washer, welding a washer to a washer and making my own because I couldn't find it. And then come to find out, there's this here and then another washer. Come to find out, I found this under the back seat. I found this in that little side cubby. So I'd have had that just fine. Mine's better because it's actually tapered. It helps to center the wheel, but I mean, everything you need's in the car. It's just, where is it? So here's my trick. I take a hose like this, and you can take this to the car wash vacuum with you, but you just pinch it so it'll fit in, shove it up in there, and then use your finger or your glove to plug up the hole. And now you've got a vacuum cleaner that's flexible and small, and you can get into all kinds of little over the edge places that this big old sucker won't fit. And lucky for me, I've got my own shop vac where I can look in and see what goodies I'm pulling in and uh, sort out the good from the bad. Can't do that with the car wash so easy. You can buy smaller versions of this too. I'll leave a link in the description. The back of this car seemed hopeless, right? But with a little bit of soak, it's amazing how all that bacteria ridden sugar stuff just gets all loosened up and it'll just wipe right off. I scrubbed it, like I say, with that dish brush. You can hear I'm a little out of breath. I got into it a little. It's kind of satisfying. It relieves frustration uh, and it gets the job done too. It's just kind of a, you know, it's a hard thing to start, but once you get going, man, it's just, I don't know. I keep saying it satisfies. Try it and you'll see what I'm talking about. You just wipe it out with your rag, flip your rag over, you know, have a hot bucket of water or a bucket of hot water. The bucket doesn't have to be hot and uh, just kind of go through it. Just spend a little time, turn the music up, and uh, go nuts. So here's a little tip for you, getting under, underneath of these lines and stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to do it on this one. On the other side, with all those fuel lines, I could get the rag underneath of it and really get all this stuff to pull up and out. Uh, results may vary, but look how nasty that is. It's disgusting. And it just comes right off with a little soap and water, you know, a little brushing, and uh, wiping up. No wonder this stuff smelled funny when it got humid. It smelled like there's some kind of animal back here that beyond description, not quite like a dog or cat, but just kind of some kind of nasty. But you see there is some pet hair mixed with just all kinds of bacteria ridden yuck. Now it's nice. Look at that. Huge, huge difference. Love it. If you're humble enough to put in a little bit of elbow grease, you can save a lot of money on a car that's nasty. Get it back to looking pretty good. Smelling pretty good too. I forgot to mention, but these plates are symmetrical, meaning that there's a right and a left. Most everything in your car will be labeled. You can see that one's the right, and you can see that that one's the left. See the L right there? So that's for when you're in the car. If you're sitting in the car and these are the front, then right side needs to be over here and left side needs to be over here. You can mark them before you pull them off if you're worried about it. But if you don't know, then you won't worry, so there's your heads up. A little bit of worry can go a long way in the prevention versus cure department. Do you remember how this was all covered in fuzz and fur? That fur and fuzz stuck because it was covered in Coca-Cola or some kind of drink. These are like brand new now. I rinsed them out in the sink and it looked like I was pouring Coke down the sink. As the water went through this, it picked up all of the stuff that was dried into it. So anyway, it got me thinking, I wonder how much is in the seat too. And I saw that this is a lot more yellow or Coca-Cola color than this one is. And this one's a lot more yellow or Coca-Cola than this one is. And that one's white. <laughs> so I've got a lot of crap in here. So I'm going to have to get out our little green clean machine, a little Bissell vacuum thing and just go over this. You can actually take these off and run them through the wash. And that would probably be a good idea too. Now that's better. I don't care who you are, that's preferable to the way that things were and quieter. And as for these cables, they're pretty secured. They're not going to rattle because I zip tied them pretty tight. 
This will be stuck up against the foam of the uh, seat bottom and it should be nice and quiet. The routing that the guy did on these was actually pretty decent. Instead of having to pull all the dash and head unit and everything out, I'm just going to leave those wires in there. Having a great sound system and a half decent installation already there, there's no sense in taking that apart at this point in my opinion. You will see that I've tightly taped the ends and I've put the RCA cables in a foam block. These are actually really nice RCA cables. I don't know if these are gold plated or not but I wouldn't be surprised. So I just drilled out some foam block on the drill press and I just shove them in there. That will help keep them dry and keep them from making noise. This is the switch wire for the amplifier and so that comes on when the radio comes on so of course I tape that up. So here we are with the seat back in. Everything's clean underneath, but it still looks terrible above. This is all dirty. So I'm gonna have to go through and address that. It's so dark, like the interior of the car is dark. The window tint's dark, so you never see it. But once you throw a big old light in there, everything just goes to crap visually. So I've got the interior put back together. Everything's bolted back in place. Everything's tucked back in, I vacuum the carpet. I still need to vacuum and clean these. Obviously they're pretty filthy. That'll be for another day. So I found the rest of the spare tire holder in the deep dark recesses. I've cleaned this all out. I didn't even know I had storage space here, so that's all fun. And I've cleaned out everything underneath it everywhere. I use my hose to suck all the BBs, or literally steel and brass BBs down in there. Found all kinds of rattly stuff and chains. Found the spare tire holder thing. Cleaned everything out. This had all kinds of junk in it that was just keep coming loose so I got that all cleaned out. It smells amazing. It looks way better than it did. It still looks like crap because this stuff is tar based. You saw a lot of that tar uh, residue under the back seat too. But man, so much nicer. And best of all when you go to use the jack, I've got my little gloves in there. You know like when it's 20 degrees outside or zero or five below and you touch metal and you're working with stuff it's just really obnoxious so I've got these gloves that uh, it's nicer so that way you're not touching the steel for those that don't know uh, when you unscrew this it loosens and frees the jack up to come out so another source of rattle can be if you've got this thing loose then it can rattle around so you can just snug that down now it won't rattle loosen it up just a little bit over time kinds of noise. So there's a little tab that it goes to right there. I basically just use the jack to hold itself. There's that and that's in great shape. My jack, I went through that whole thing and made it more usable. Can you think of a better time to get your air checked on your spare tire than now? So it says that the maximum load at 60 psi, so and that's the max pressure, so I'm going to fill this one up to 55 and call it good. And by the way, this was at like 10 psi, I put a little bit of air in it, we're up to like 25 now. These fill up fast because there's not a lot of volume, but we got a ways to go to get to 50. It's a darn good thing I checked this. You think you're all prepared, but I mean between three cars and a motorcycle and all this other stuff that I have to look after, it's easy to forget, so when you get the chance, never underestimate the power of now. Do it now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. See a bunch of hot air balloons here, all that color.